I'm a suspect. Hanging with the killers in the projects. Taylor wanna bail, keep quiet. Catch a nigga slipping from behind. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. Thursday, T Squad. It's me, Keisha, aka Color Me Pink, and I'm here with this week's Real Housewives of Miami reunion part one. I drop videos Monday through Sunday. Everything that I say is for entertainment purposes only, meaning my jokes. So if that works for you, let's get into this review. The reunion begins, and Andy immediately goes up for Gertie's dress. It was by far one of the best dresses that I've ever seen on any housewife reunion show she looked amazing that chain metal dress was exquisite honey best dress of this reunion by far she nailed it the girls were gagging especially alexia because um Gertie was like, you know, it's something in Miami in the front and something in the back. And so when Andy got to Alexia, she was like, you want to see the back of my dress? It's it's very Halle Berry. And I'm like, girl, more like Drew Barrymore. Girl, and nothing about that dress was giving Halle Berry at all. You just wanted a moment and you was mad that the black girl slayed and job when it came to the outfit andy then starts asking the viewers questions and the first one is to nicole uh one of the viewers asks how can she and anthony afford a boat a plane and a 44 million dollar house and she had to remind the kids that they actually paid 13 million for when they initially bought it and was able to sell it for 44 million dollars <laughs> and here go Alex Alexia hating but Thomas um, but is that your money or Anthony's money and she was like I spend it like it's my money so it don't matter you mad because that Beavis and Butthead looking man over there that you over there laying up with ain't got the kind of coins that my man got and he about to be my husband anyway so it don't matter hater sitting up there looking like Skeletor Andy then brings up Martina, Julia's wife, who is suffering from throat and breast cancer. And Julia says something very poignant how Martina had went months prior to get a mammogram and they didn't see anything. And then when they, she went back again, that's when they saw it. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, um, please go and get your mammograms done as a breast cancer survivor i have to have mine done in august i'm afraid i'm not gonna lie every time this comes up i get very afraid because you know i fear that you know what if it comes back but i would rather know and be safe than sorry so please women especially if you're over the age of 40 go and get your mammograms done early detection is the best detection and you know my prayers go out to martina nobody should have to go through breast cancer let alone breast cancer and throat cancer so god bless her and i wish her nothing but healing and a speedy recovery and that she will be in remission and cancer free andy then asked lisa what's going on between her and lenny and the divorce and she was like we haven't even gone in front of a judge yet and i was like oh my god what is taking so long but they all explain that, you know, the divorce process, I guess in this case, you know, takes a minute when there's so much contention and money that got to be separated, housing and all of that stuff. So Andy was like, I want to talk about Lenny's hot mic moment, which you better use in court. And that fully shows that you did not know that that man was seeing other women because, you know, he got out there saying that they had an open marriage. Well, if y'all had an open marriage, then why didn't she know about old girl? Why was you whispering about it? You even said on the hot mic that she didn't even know about the girl and that you were cheating. So, girl, you better use that in court against him. So, um. Lisa was like, you know, she was shocked when she saw it, but she had been suspecting that something was going on. Larsa Big Lip Self jump in was like, you caught him in a hot tub together a year before. And Andy was like, what you say? Hey, 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 hey. And I'm looking like, hey, what you say, girl? You caught him in the hot tub with this same woman a year and a half before. And... 
She was like, yeah, she saw them in the hot tub together and they were a little bit too close. And she went over there and was like, um, excuse me. And she said she pulled Lenny away from the girl or whatever. And I'm like, Lisa, 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 Lisa. Like, I feel like once again, and I've said this throughout this whole season, Lisa knew something was going on. Um, but I think that she was in denial. I think that she was trying to hold on to her marriage by any means necessary. And if that meant turning a blind eye to certain things, I think that's what she did. I really honestly do because ain't no way. Ain't no way. <laughs> ain't no way. Like, ain't no way, honey. So, um, after that, she explains how they through that Halloween party together and how the girlfriend wasn't invited because she had put that restraining order on Lisa and how Lenny had told the the blogs or whatever that she had two lovers there with her and lying on her and stuff and how her mother-in-law invited the girl to her birthday party because she got upset with Lisa because Lenny lied and told her that Lisa went to New York for fun when really she was in New York for BravoCon. So the mama decided to be spiteful and invite the new girlfriend to her birthday party. And Andy was like, so where do this thing stand now between you and your mother-in-law? And she was like, you know, it's, it's, it's strained. Like it's, it's a lot of back and forth. Girl, at this point, you need to wipe your hands of the mother-in-law. She is not your mama. She petty. And at the end of the day, she going to ride with her son, regardless of the fact, because he probably hold the purse strings when it come to her too. It, this might be the time where you need to reconcile with your family or build a new family because that lady is not your family and she don't mean you no good neither the asked is she still grocery shopping for Lenny and she was like yeah because of the kids girl ain't no cousin no kids he can have a nanny or an assistant shop for them kids girl stop being stupid Lisa when it come to this man so Andy was like I don't know why he agreed to film with you if he knew he was gonna leave you and Lisa was like, he said, when filming rap, that's when he was going to do it. And Andy says, well, what made him do it then? And Lisa was like, we went to a charity function and I stayed out late until like four o'clock in the morning with my girlfriends. And the next day I was hungover and I woke up and he was looking at me like he was disgusted and was like, "Ugh, I want a divorce. And I'm like, he uses that as an excuse but you always in the club. You always around scantily clad, dressed women and doing what you want to do. But she go out one night and have a good time. And it's, uh, man, please. That man just used that as an excuse. And she also says that um, he's been threatening divorce since the day they got married. But this time she knew it was the real deal Holyfield. And I was like, why would you stay with somebody that constantly did that to you? But once again, she didn't have any family. She was isolated. She was young. This man is providing this lifestyle for her. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, child. But her new man, her new man, Jody, okay, was there. And my girl is effing for a purpose. For the old school T-Squad members, they know what I'm talking about. I think I'm going to make a series out of that coming up soon. Effing for a purpose, okay? And Lisa is effing for a purpose. Yes, God. So her new man, Jody. Let me give y'all the stats on Jody. This is Jody, who is fine, by the way. A major upgrade from Lenny Lobster looking self. And his daughter. His daughter's name is Peyton. She was born in 2009. According to his LinkedIn profile, Jody is the co-founder and CEO of Intro Hive, which is one of the fastest growing B&B Renee acceleration systems. I don't know what that is, but it sounds complicated. Prior to launching his company in 2012, the tech entrepreneur worked as the head of productivity and execution for Chalk. Okay, yes, sir. He also graduated from Harvard University where he got his master's degree in management information systems. He also earned a BBA from the University of New Brunswick. Okay, all right. 
He is currently a resident of Miami, but he is a Canada native. So baby, <laughs> Lisa didn't downgrade. She upgrade and I am here for it. Let me, let me upgrade you. She looks so much better with him anyway. It looks age appropriate and they look like a really handsome couple. Oh God. Adriana and Marisol joined the ladies on the couch and Larsa says that her butt is real and that she did not have a BBL. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that this old lady continues to lie this is what cracks me up y'all want to get on these reality shows and act like y'all so real and y'all keep it real and i don't lie and if you ask me the question i'm gonna give you the truth but you steady getting on her acting like you have not changed from Larsa to Liza. Girl, you are a whole clone. You are a whole different person. Okay? Now, I know who Larsa Pippen is. This is Larsa Pippen. This is the Larsa that when I was a young girl and watching Scottie Pippen play for the Bulls, who I saw sitting courtside with the kids. This is the Larsa that I saw at all of the Hollywood parties and that was on the first season of The Real Housewives of Miami. This new lady, this new lady, Liza, I don't know who she is. She was made in a laboratory somewhere, child. She was a chemical experience gone wrong, all right? I don't know who this lady is. This lady is an imposter. I want the old Larsa back, the real Larsa, Liza. Liza can kick rocks, okay? I don't know why she's steady sitting up her line saying she ain't had no BBL. Girl, you done had a BBL, a CCL, a XXL. You done had your nose done. You have fillers in your face, in your lips, your boobs done, your hips done, your butt done. You are a whole new woman. They even were so shady that they went back to season one and showed Larsa, not Liza, but Larsa and her flat behind. Just own it and keep it moving. What's the point of sitting up here blatantly lying when we all know the truth? Like, it's stupid. Andy then asked Marisol about her drinking because, you know, we the viewers have been saying a lot about how she's always drinking and got a drink in her hand. So she was like, I take it a little extra in my confessionals because I'm branding and marketing my future brand. Girl, so you're trying to tell me that this was basically promotion for a liquor brand that you're going to come out with that ain't even nowhere near ready or ready to be talked about or produced girl no that's you that's you you came back this season with this shtick of being a drunk and it backfired and so she was like I actually think Nicole drinks more than me and everybody on this set and it's like y'all sit up here and grasp for straws and just say anything that comes to your little nimkin poop brain of yours like come on now you know dang on well that lady don't drink more than y'all and she's a whole anesthesiologist girl get out of here like y'all just be saying whatever and it's so ridiculous andy then asks nicole do you think your dad will walk you down the aisle and she's silent so it kind of seems like things aren't still that good between them so, uh, Marisol even says, you know, when I left your engagement party, I got it. Like, I even understood it. Like, I rolled with the best of them, but even your daddy was a lot for me. And that's saying a lot. If Marisol saying that, then you got to know it's an issue. So, um, Nicole was like, you know, he still hasn't said sorry. And here go Larsa, Liza, putting her two cents in you guys are belittling a grown man i felt bad when i watched that scene when he cried like we can't change anyone just accept him that's easy for you to say you can't tell somebody how to feel he's not your father you don't know what he, that man has put that girl through and it's just not okay to accept negativity or trauma from people when you don't have to I'm not a child anymore I don't have to allow you to treat me bad and accept for and expect for me to just take it and take it and take it and continue to be targeted and hurt by you and it's just because I have to accept who you are absolutely not that's not how life works you might do that Liza but not her so um Nicole was like but it's hard um 
Larsa, the, uh, when, you know, you just hear people say to accept him because he's your dad. You know, I remember I spent a month in the ICU because I got ran over by a car because he was too busy chit-chatting with a friend. Like, that's craziness. Uh, in the ICU, I've been in the ICU like a month. I was only in the ICU for what, a week and a half, but that was still too long for me. So I can only imagine as a child being in an ICU for a month because your daddy wasn't paying attention to you and you end up getting hit by a car. But here go Liza, just accept him for who he is. Girl, shut up. So um, Andy was like, you know, what is your relationship right now? And she was like, you know, we've sat down with the doctor twice more and we're spending a lot more time with each other. You know, I still haven't met the girlfriend. She's mad because I called her a hoochie mama on camera. And Lisa was like, how old is she? And Nicole was like, um, around like 29. I didn't know that the girlfriend was that young. I thought that this was just, you know, a woman that she didn't care for. I didn't know that he was dating a 29-year-old woman. What? So, once again, here go Liza talking about, but what does it matter? It doesn't even matter. I hate when people put age on everything. And Nicole was like, Larsa, my dad is almost 70. And she was like, you're keeping half of his life private rather than accept all of it. Girl, just because you out here dating somebody that could literally be your son, somebody that you saw as a child, you might not have had a relationship with his family like that or spend time with his family like that, but you still saw him as a little kid at events throughout the years when your husband and Michael Jordan played for the Bulls. Just because you out here robbing the cradle don't mean that it's appropriate for a 70 some uh, almost 70 year old man to be dating a 29 year old woman. What on God's green earth do y'all have to talk about or find in common? And you can't tell me that girl ain't with that old tail man for his money or for the fact that his daughter on national television. Like, that's weird. Who wants some old wrinkly tail old man? Girl, get out of here. Andy then focuses on Larson was like, the last two times I saw you, you were with Marcus Jordan. How close have you two gotten? Um, we're friends. We're friends. And I'm like, <laughs> says the woman who literally just said, you're keeping half of his life private rather than accept it all when it comes to Nicole's father dating a young girl. But when asked about your relationship with Marcus, it's, we're friends, we're friends, knowing dang on well y'all more than friends. Like, if you comfortable with what you're doing, you don't see anything wrong with it, then what's the point of lying and being coy about the situation? Stand on it. We together. And, but you know that what y'all doing is weird bro it's weird on so many levels so Andy was like come on you're dating she was like yeah yeah we're, we're dating meanwhile they put the camera on this weirdo backstage he looked like he was on the slow bus he looked like Michael Jordan barely, barely paid him any attention in life like he just looked like a creep he looked like he sit in the basement and make explosives like he just looked weird so Andy was like, you know, Marcus is closer to your son's age than you. She was like, I, I don't even think about age. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't think about, girl, you think about age when your butt start getting hot flashes. Okay. When your bones and stuff is aching, when you can't get up and get out and get something, when he ready to get up out the bed and it take you five minutes just to roll up out that sucker. Girl, you think about age. Don't, don't go there. Don't go there. You think about age. Stop. You most certainly going to have to think about age when it comes to the point where if and when he wants to have children, oh, age will pay a factor in that, love. Alexia and her frosted eyeshadow <laughs> segment comes up. Yo, whoever her makeup artist is needs to be fired immediately. Yo, them extra dark eyebrows and that white frosted eyeshadow was horrible. Horrible. Don't nobody do makeup like that no more. Like, what is going on? Andy asks her about, you know, being a narcissist. She says she doesn't believe she was a narcissist, but she was born a star, honey. She's standing on it. So Gertie jumps in, was like, but saying that we're jealous is a different thing. 
And Alexa was like, but you said you were a star season four. They played a clip back and it's obvious that Gertie is being funny. Like, I'm a star. Like, she was being funny. She wasn't being serious. But they grasped at straws to try to deflect from their own stupidity. And Gertie was like, girl, humble yourself, please. Andy, keep going. <laughs> Gertie did not come to play with the girls. And I was so happy about that. So Nicole jumps in, was like, you act like a star, but belittle everyone else. Alexi was like, I think that all of you resent the fact that I'm resilient. And Andy was like, you think they resent the fact that you're resilient? She was like, yeah, because they're always bringing up my trauma to take me back there. Girl, you bring up your traumas more than anybody. Ain't nobody hating on the fact that you so-called resilient. Girl, get out of here. Half the women on this stage are resilient. So Gertie was like, She's disrespectful. And Alexi was like, give me an example. And Gertie says, I sent you flowers for your wedding and you never said thank you. And Alexi was like, it looked like it was planned and staged. And Gertie was like, I don't have time to plan and stage nothing, girl. I had a job to do that day. And I told you if I could come, I would come. So Gertie was like, okay, if you're thankful, just say thank you. Baby, that lady did not say nothing. She sat there on mute. And Gertie was like, exactly. You haven't given me a sorry. You said, I don't care. I don't give a F. You talked about my charity. And Alexa was like, you're still talking about that? And Nicole jumps in was like, you said her party was crappy and that Marisol's was better. And it's not like she just had a regular party that you're talking about. This was an event in honor of her deceased brother and nieces, I believe, or nephews or whatever. And Alexia was like, um... You're not going to castrate me like you do Russell. You treat him so bad. And I'm like, she castrates Russell. She treat him so bad. Like, she goes below the belt. She goes too far. Like, why would you say something like that about that lady and her marriage? Like, what? What? You can't tell me that Alexia is so happy like she claims to be. I think she married Todd for money and security. Because she knew dang on well that's, that nail salon was not going to be enough to keep up with her lifestyle. Like, she's a weirdo. She's a weirdo. And that was just, like, so distasteful for her to say. Andy then brings up Alexia saying Julia would be a prostitute because she's Russian. And Alexia tells him, so I'm, I'm so sorry. I was so sorry. I wasn't then, but I'm so sorry. I didn't realize this was a sensitive issue for you. You said before when you came to this country and the, and here go Marisol thinking she's smart and trying to help her, stigmatism. <laughs> and Alexia's like, yeah, stigmatism and all that. Baby, Adriana was like, stigmatism is an eye disease. <laughs> Nicole started cracking up and she was like, it's a stigma. <laughs> and Marisol talks, oh, okay, Amex. And Nicole got her. She was like, I'll add you as a co-signer so you can have one too. Boom, boom, got your ass. She ain't know what to say. Andy says, when you realized that Adriana's date wasn't married, did you ever reach out to him or her to apologize? And Alexia was like, actually, I'm not going to apologize. He wasn't her boyfriend. She rents these men. And Adriana was like, I rent men? What? <laughs> she was like, he's a doctor, first of all. I don't think that a doctor needs to be rented uh, for clout or for money or whatever. And since Alexia's, I mean, I'm sorry, since Adriana's been on this show, we have known that she's been a man eater, that she likes men, that she dates a lot of guys. You acting like this is an ugly woman. Adriana is really, really pretty. Like, so once again, just lying to be lying. And then Adriana then hits her with the boom pal, the boom cat. And she goes over to Andy with a text message receipt between her and um, Alexia from season four, right before they started filming, where Alexia was telling her that some guy that she knew was interested in Adriana and liked her and wanted to date her. And Adriana was like, is he married? And she was like, I don't know if he's married. And so Adriana was like, well, if he is, I don't date married men. And Alexia says, you know, well, he seemed like he was really interested in you. So he said that, you know, his marriage has never been that good. And Andy was like, well, that's kind of messed up. 
And Nicole was like, yeah, because it's like you're trying to push her to date a married man. And Andy was like, you know, she's saying you tried to set her up with a married man. And she said no. And baby Alexia didn't know what to do. She was sitting there just a stuttering and a sputtering. And you know how her face get to going when she been caught in the lie. And she don't know how to respond quickly. When I tell y'all that Alexia and Teresa are the same person, they look alike and they act just alike. Oh my God. And since she's been caught in another lie and been put on blast, she hits below the belt again and talks, well, let's talk about the father of your son. Once again, why are you talking about people's family? But then when somebody say something about yours, it's World War Three. Like, make it make sense. So Andy was like, you know, the perception from the viewers this season are that, are that you have a hard time owning things and apologizing. And Alexi was like, you know, my apologies are sincere. I have to really feel it. So I'm sorry if I can't apologize. No, you're just a horrible person. You're just a horrible person and you're ignorant. Nicole checks her again. She was like, when something happens to you, you want to, you want somebody to apologize right then and there that second. And if they don't apologize to your liking, it's like you make them kiss your toes or something. And Larson was like, you never apologize to me. And it's like, girl, stop trying to make Fetch happen. Get over the fact that that girl said whatever she said last season about not having you in her house. Girl, you trying to hold on to something that's so minuscule, so minuscule. And then Andy brings up the whole Amex situation, you know, because that side of the couch tried to make it seem like um, Nicole straight up threw the Amex card at that man. And she was like, you know, I'm thinking that I really did something wrong until I watched it back and I didn't even do anything. So Lisa was like, you know, let me have something to say here. I want to say that everyone was embarrassing that day. And I was like, amen, 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 amen. I'm so happy that she said that Alexia and Marisol and Larsa sitting over there looking like the three stooges, not re like just shocked that she told the truth and shamed the devil. So Alex was like, I was attacked all season. And Andy says to her, you know, you feel like you were attacked all season. And Lisa jumps in and was like, well, maybe that was your response because you felt like you were attacked and you just said, I'm a star, I'm a star, I'm a star. And Alexia was like, well, I still believe and I encourage all of you to believe because if you believe that, maybe you wouldn't have allowed Lenny to do the things he's done to you. And Lisa was like, what? And Alexa was like, you need to have self-confidence, Lisa. Now, obviously, this part was cut from the initial conversation when Andy brought up the whole narcissistic thing and her saying that she was a star and all of that stuff. They cut that ending part of the episode from that earlier part and put it towards the end. It was obvious that they cut it and chopped it up or whatever. But I was like, did she really just say that to that lady? Like, she don't care who she offends. Like, she just feel like she can say whatever, whenever, to whomever. And Lisa, girl, I'm, I'm, you, you better get on the other side of the couch because they ain't your friends. Larsa ain't really your friend, friend like that. I feel like she's there to help you or whatever because, A, I feel like she nosy. Um, and I think that she wants to be viewed as, you know, a supportive friend. But... Alexia ain't loyal to nobody. We see that on this upcoming season of Ultimate Girls Trip, she apparently going to be talking about Marisol. Like, she ain't a friend to nobody. You better be real cautious around her because she is the true definition of a wolf in sheep's clothing because that lady don't care about nobody. Nobody but her kids, to be honest with you. Overall, though, I'm going to give Reunion Part 1 an A. It was chalk filled with drama. The ladies did not hesitate. It wasn't anything slow about this. There wasn't anything that um, needed to be filled. It wasn't a filler episode. They got straight to it. So I can't wait to see what Part 2 and 3 going to be about, child, because they covered a lot in Part 1. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about Reunion Part 1 down below in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.